Hi everyone, uh, Nick Hewitt here with another video tutorial. Um, this time I'm going to be doing a two or three part series, I'm not sure yet, um, on uh, creating a web layout in Photoshop and then slicing it up and converting it to a CSS based layout. <clears throat> the reason why I'm not sure if I'm going to do a two or three part, um, the third part would actually be uh, covering the difference between uh, Firefox and IE and then you'd, the, you'd have to set up two different uh, versions of your CSS style sheets. Um, so that's why I'm not sure what I'm gonna, how far into it I'm gonna get. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started with this one. I'm just gonna do a quick layout um, in Photoshop. So I'll go ahead and go File, New. I'm using CS4, um, but all the uh, tools that I use should be available as far back as the original uh, CS Suite uh, that was released by Adobe. Um, so I'll go ahead and create a new uh, new document and then you have presets that you can choose from so if there's a certain uh, task you're trying to do there are presets built in so I'm going to do web but there are mobile devices um, film and video and you can create your own under custom um, but web has a couple presets for default web sizes uh, which I think is pretty nice I usually go with um, 10, uh, 1024 by 768 just because some people still have their screen resolution set down to the 1024 by 768 resolution. Um, you can also do the larger resolutions but then people with the, the smaller resolution will actually have to scroll across and it might be harder for them uh, to view, view your web page and it could get a little annoying after a while for them so they might end up leaving. Um, so I think 1024 by 768 is a very good option. Uh, and then your screen resolution, you want it to be 72 uh, pixels per inch. Um, normally with print documents, it's 300 or above. Um, with web documents, because uh, the way that the monitors work and stuff, 72 is a, is a good number. And it brings down your file size quite a bit. So go ahead and hit OK and create our new document. And for this instance, I'm actually just going to do um, quick web layout uh, so I'll go ahead and just get started I just clicked on the new layer icon um, I'm gonna try and cover some basic Photoshop uh, tools and and what they do and where the buttons are uh, while I go through this so it'll kinda be a tutorial about Photoshop as well um, so go ahead and create your new layer with your new layer highlighted this is your layers panel um, and the order in which these are stacked is important and I'm actually going to change this double clicking on the background you'll notice that there's the little uh, padlock icon that means that this layer is locked it can't be edited or anything like that so double click on that and make it a new layer um, I just go with the defaults you can always change this if you want um, actually I'll go ahead and change this to background but normally I would just leave it layer one it's a good idea to label each of your uh, each of your layers because then it's easier for you to understand um, what each piece is when you come back to it later. Uh, in this one I'm going to do this as header. Actually header background. Alright, <coughs> excuse me. So we'll just grab the marquee tool and what this does is just make selections. Um, they're square, oval, or elliptical um, and then you can just select individual rows or columns um, but I just usually use the, the square marquee tool. I like to have clean layouts um, and squares and sharp edges and stuff kind of the way I like things. I guess I'm plain and simple. Um, so with this layer selected, the header underscore BG layer and having that marquee uh, selection, I'm going to go into the gradient tool. And what the gradient tool does is it grabs your foreground color and your background color and it'll, it'll fade in between the two of them. And you, as you can see right here, this is what it would look like if you reversed it. Um, you see that the, the colors switch. So we'll go ahead and click on find a good color. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure what color I want to go with. And another way that I like to do things is clicking on a color over here and then going to a color libraries. And what this does is it switches it over to Pantone colors and Pantone colors um, are useful for if you're down the road you want to use the same colors in print you can easily find whatever Pantone color it is and you can send that over to your 
your printer and they'll know what colors to use. Um, so I'll click OK and use that one. Click on your background color and then rather than selecting something in here, go and just use automatically the eyedropper. Uh, comes up and you'll see that you can just select the color that was in your foreground color and then do the same thing, color libraries and click on the lighter color. Um, and I'm just going to switch those by clicking on these little two arrows and that, that'll toggle uh, between your foreground and background. If you want to use keyboard shortcuts, X is, also does the same thing. Um, but I'm actually, I'm going to, I changed my mind. I'm going to do dark blue to light blue. Alright, do that as my header. Put in some text. Again, new layer. Um, header text. And then grab your text tool. And all you do is you just click once. And then you can change whether you want to have it left, uh, center, or right alignment. Um, I'm just going to stick with left alignment and choose your font whether you, your font weight or any additional parameters that you want for your font size and this is just whether you want a strong uh, font rendering or um, there's a couple different options in here you can see it changes it slightly um, I'm just going to keep it with, uh, with strong and go from there um, like I, I happen to click off of my uh, my text field here and you'll notice that if I hover over it, I can get back into it. But another way of doing that, if you're not on the layer, is just by double clicking on this T icon on your layer itself. And it'll actually get you inside of your text field. So we'll go ahead and type in um, whatever text we want. I'm going to put in my company name. Um, so I'm going to double click on that and select everything. That's another thing that that does. And that's just a quick shortcut that I use. And I'm going to do all white. All right. And then I'm actually going to bump that up a little bit to 36. Make that a little bit larger. There. And while I'm here, I'm also just going to select designs. Actually, I'm just going to do those of you who like to use. Um, sorry, I just don't like the way that looks. You can use hexadecimal numbers here, or you can actually do the RGB coloring um, and then adjust your hue and saturation that way. Uh, those of you who like to use uh, CMYK coloring, you have that option here as well. Um, so I'm just going to do uh, CC, 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 or do a little bit darker. So I'll do all nines. And this is just a gray color, as you can see. Um, and then, uh, so our header is just about done. Later, I'm going to add a search bar, or maybe not. I'm not quite sure. Um, so create a new group. That's next to your layers icon. Here, you can. Uh, group things. I like to group them by sections of the website that I'm building. So group one, call that header. Everything that goes in the header, just select everything. Click on the top one, then shift and click on the bottom one, and it'll select everything. Uh, and then just drag it up over the header, and then you can use this little arrow to open and close folders. Um, so I'm going to create a new group, call this one uh, adds and create a new layer. And I'm actually going to draw this under header so that way it doesn't over uh, right over my header information. Um, so I'll go, we'll go ahead and make a selection. This one I'm going to do a little bit larger and I am going to do um, <coughs> another gradient here. So and I'm going to restore this to the default coloring, so I'm just going to click on this little icon here, the black and white cubes, um, and that will just restore that to our default colors. And I'm just going to do a, a dark gray here, so all threes, click OK. Click on G for gradient, or you can just click on this icon here. I like to use keyboard shortcuts, it cuts down my time so much. Um, <coughs> So I'm just going to flip this really quick. So just hit 